While training for the A4, I ran into three topics that seemed difficult at first. Number one is understanding alignment angles. There's so many of them. Some are adjustable, some are not. Some cause tire tread wear, some do not. And some can be positive or negative in relation to a center line. The alignment angles you should really know for the test are camber, caster, toe, SAI, included angle, thrust angle, steering angle, setback, and axle offset. Keeping track of which alignment angle does what can be difficult at first, it can be confusing, but with many hours of studying and proper training, you'll know all the important information about each alignment angle. Important information such as a vehicle will pull towards the least positive caster. That's the least positive caster. And incorrect SAI on one side can cause bump steer. Fascinating, right? You know what else is fascinating? Some people really do this to their wheels. They really modify their wheels to look like this. Now, personally, I think it looks atrocious. But anyway, are those wheels suffering from positive camber or negative camber? What kind of tire tread wear will we see? In the following picture, are the front wheels toe in or toe out? What kind of tire tread wear will we see? Number two is identifying rear suspension systems. You know, live axle, semi-independent, independent. Yeah, 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 I know this is super easy. All you gotta do is just take a quick look but I know a couple of people that still cannot identify rear suspension systems. They claim that the components confuse them. I know you can have a coil spring back there, you can have leaf springs, McPherson strut, but once you figure out that certain systems can only have certain components, you'll be fine. And there's not that many questions on the test about rear suspension but you still gotta know the diagnostics. For example, if you had coil springs in the back and both coil springs were weak and sagging, how is that gonna affect the caster angle in the front? And in a vehicle that has leaf springs in the back, if the eye bushing in one of the leaf springs is severely worn, what kind of condition is that going to cause? Basically, the axle is gonna be able to shift and this condition is known as... Number three is adjusting recirculating ball steering gears. I had never worked on one of these before. I knew most things about rack and pinion, but recirculating ball steering gears was a whole new beast to me. I was amazed when I saw a beam style torque wrench being rotated on the stub shaft. I had no idea what was going on. Even the official ASC task list makes things more difficult than they really are. Check it out. Adjust steering gear worm bearing preload and sector lash. <sighs> I knew what those words meant individually, but not in a sentence like that. Sector lash, the good news is with the right tools, the process is very simple. For the test, you should know the symptom side of recirculating ball steering gears. For example, what are two symptoms of a sector lash that is adjusted too tight? What are two symptoms of a sector lash that is adjusted too loose? Which one of these adjustments is done first? And that's it. There's good money to be made in steering and suspension service. And some of you are just sitting on the sidelines. You know how much it costs to replace a rack and pinion? How much it costs to change a strut? There's good money to be made, but first, get the tool of knowledge up here. The A4 is kinda hard, but if you really want to succeed, if you really put in the time and effort, it's not that bad. So good luck to you and have a good day.